السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Today I want to talk about addiction. When I was very young, when I was a young boy, I distinctively remember my father telling me, "Son, don't get used to stuff." And I'm like, "What do you mean?" He said, "One day, that stuff that you got used to, when it's not there, what are you gonna do?" Basically, what he meant is. You're gonna lose your mind. So today I want to talk about some uncommon addictions, addictions that a lot of people don't talk about, but it's very prevalent in in today's life, especially in the Western society. And these uncommon addictions are addiction to insurance. Everything is insurance, car, life. I mean, how can you insure life? Over a thousand years ago, maybe it was more than a millennia ago, but the Egyptians used to take their treasures with them to their grave. Now we're taking debt, debt to our grave. What a turnaround, is it? Another addiction I want to talk to about is addiction to supremacy. What I mean by supremacy, it's not color or religion. It's just plain old supremacy, power over one another in any way possible. Whether it's at work, managers, CEOs, legislators, the power to control others. Another addiction I want to talk about today is addiction to. Mindless consumption. Just because it's there, you don't have to always consume it. Some stuff you just have to leave it in the ground. Like clean energy. The electric car has been around for since the 80s, but why are we still taking the oil from the ground, knowing? In in this day and age, knowing what so much, what problems comes after it. Another one is addiction to profit. Capitalism has gone over the edge, especially after COVID. Capitalism has gone on steroids. Everybody is desperate. I hate this term. That. Social media and mainstream media uses securing the bag. What does that even mean? Securing the bag. Like, are we that desperate? Capitalism has gone overboard. Profit at all cost. Human ethics out of the window. Profit, profit, profit. That's what. That's the talk of the day. And no matter who, who, whose life you destroy, profit is what matters. That's why the city that I live in, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, most of the homeless people are under the age of 25. How's that possible? Most of these children grew up in an affluent home. Middle class for family, working parents, and don't just blame it on the opioid pandemic or endemic or whatever medical term you want to call it. Who created these powerful drugs in the first place? I remember watching Hollywood Hollywood movies about wartime type of genre movies, and when a soldier gets shot or whatever, they would always say, "Where's the morphine? Where's the morphine? What the hell is fentanyl?" Why? If if morphine was already powerful enough for hospitals and for war soldiers of war, why did we have to create fentanyl? Once again, we go back to addiction to profit. We're creating senseless drugs just to create a profit, and then when there's Endemic or whatever medical situation that happens afterwards, they bail out. Company bankrupt. Nobody gets locked up. 
because this, those drugs didn't end up on the street by accident. Cartels didn't cook them up in jungles in, in a different world. These drugs came from a lab, created unnecessarily to create profit. And the last one is one of the most crucial ones that I want to talk about. Addiction to first world amenities, or how I like to put it, privilege over abused. What I mean by that is you open the, you open the faucet and water comes out. I find that to be privilege because you don't know where that water came from, what that water went through. And, and you don't care because you flush the toilet, you don't know where that water is going, where the toilet paper is going. You don't really care. So that is the that is one of the privileges of living in the first world world. First world country. It's not caring about what where things came from or where they're going. So not caring about how much you're consuming and not caring about what you're wasting and what you're allowing allowing certain things to go to waste that don't have to go to waste even even messing up recycling and I've been I've been a I've been a habitual abuser of first world privileges that is one of the several reasons one of the main reasons that made me run away from my home Somaliland that I was planning on living and and working and making it my home. And when things went awry, when things went wrong, when things got hard, when my heart was broken, and I escaped. I ran away from my own home. That is how powerful these drugs are. That's how powerful the addiction to first world privileges are. Everything is drive through. Everything comes to your house. Over consumption. Abuse everything. Work a miserable job. Live a better life. And I've done these things personally. I've, I've abused most of these things. But Alhamdulillah, God showed me the right way and I finally opened up my eyes and it did, it wasn't quick, it took me quite, it took me five years and I'm still, and I'm still deprogram, deprogramming myself and letting go of certain stuff that I got used to, like for example, the laundry machine, another privilege. And um, so this past summer, I lost my laundry cart and instead of getting a new one, I said, you know what, I'm going to wash my laundry by hand. And I found out if I use the proper detergent and I kind of use a centrifugal force, basically me with a stick, moving the clothes around in a circle and creating some type of friction so that some of the dirt and the grease or whatever comes out and basically hot water sometimes a pot full of hot boiling water and I got most of my stains out my clothes were smelling nice and tight and I hung them up on my balcony I only messed up one pants but overall the the results were magnificent. And I said to myself, I can do more of this. I should do more of this. And slowly by slowly, I began making food out of scratch. For example, pizza, bread. I won't lie to you. After I adapted a frugal lifestyle, sometimes not being good with finances can make your 
liquidity kind of a little volatile and uh, I don't have money all the time so learning how to make stuff from scratch pancakes basically a lot of stuff with flour and um, really helped me uh, become more independent from the supermarket by basically having only four basic ingredients oil flour water and heat oh salt don't forget salt and sugar because the times that I was broke and I love these uh, what are they called butter butter can butter tart butter tart yes Canada's favorite dessert I love them but they came a time that it was six dollar forty for six pieces I said hell no I went to the store I grabbed a bag of flour I said I gotta I gotta make this University thank you for helping me out and three two one three two one pie recipe I forgot the rest of it but and then make the uh, filling there was this one time I had a lot of dates in my cupboard and mixed up a little date uh, puree another time I had a, a lot of sweet potatoes I made a sweet potato pie delicious so basically what I'm trying to say is with a few errors and mishaps and little failures in the beginning you get more and more into it you, you begin to understand the food better and better. You begin to appreciate it. You begin to understand the process and the method. Time, temperature. I'll be quite honest with you, I took culinary school 10 years ago. But I hated baking. I loved to be in the kitchen, but I hated baking. Because baking was such a precision method of cooking. And I love to freestyle and improvise and just go nuts and, and experiment. And you can't do that with baking. Well, you can, but you got to get the methods right. You got to get the fundamentals and the principles correct. So anyways, that's what I wanted to talk to you about today is uncommon addictions that most of us have. Embarrassed to talk about. And it's time that we get to the table and start looking at these issues. Thank you very much. Like, sign, and subscribe.